Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam and we are studying the operating system CPU scheduling algorithms. In this video, we are going to understand the priority based CPU scheduling algorithm but in the mode of preemption. So the criteria is going to be same as the non-preemptive priority which we understood in the previous video. So the criteria is priority of the process. So whichever had the highest priority will be scheduled first. But the mode of execution is going to be preemptive. That means when you are running a process, if any other process of higher priority arrives in your ready queue, then your short term scheduler or the CPU scheduler is going to pick that process, put that on the CPU and the one who is running will be kept back into the ready queue. So that is what the, it, I mean, it's going to involve a context switch immediately. Right. So for understanding the question, we have taken the gate 2017 question from the set two. question simply says we have an environment where we have these many process. These are their respective arrival times. These are the respective birth time and these are the priorities of each process respectively where zero shows the highest priority. Also, question explicitly mentions that there is no I.O. burst time for any of the process, which simply means you just have to consider this burst as the CPU burst. Now, question says calculate the average waiting time for all the processes making use of the preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. So let's begin to schedule the processes based on the priority preemptive algorithm. So here we have the Gantt chart which we are going to make. At the time zero, so this is going to show your CPU status on the time scale. Correct? Yes. So now, first of all, at the time zero, just look at the process which is available in your system. So at time zero, we just have one process. So that ha there we have no clash. We just have to pick this and schedule it no matter whatever it is. Priority because there is no multiple process, so no problem. So let's take P1, schedule it, but mind it, while P1 is running, if at all any other process comes into the system which are which is higher in priority, this might get preempted. Let's see which is the next process arriving in the system. So this is coming at time zero. The next one is coming at time two, which is having the priority one, which is quite higher than the priority of P one. That means we will run P one from zero to two till this process arrives, and the moment of time the this process P four arrives with the ready queue. CPU scheduler will see, oh, P4 is higher than the P1. So what I should do? I should preempt it. So immediately it will take the P4 right here and P1 will be kept back in the ready queue. So mind it, it has run for two schedules. So it has become from 11 to 9. Correct. Now, we are going to schedule P4. Again, it has the priority 1. But let's see what is the next process arriving. So the next process arriving is at time 5 which is P2 and has the most high priority or the highest priority. So till the time 5 P4 is going to run and again because it also has a lengthier burst time. So it runs for 3 bursts so it becomes 7 and the time 5 happens again we get a new process with a higher priority and so that comes on the red, on the get chart. Everyone, I have not cut this off. I have not cut this off. Why? Because they are not finished. They just got some instances to run and they have left with more instances to run. Okay. Now, because, because a P2 is on the highest priority, no matter whatever process comes in your system, it is going to run till the end of it because no other process has the same priority. Right? So, whatever is the length required for P2, 28. So, should do it for completely. 5 plus 28. How much? 33. So, now I can say this one is done. Correct? Correct. Now, you see, by the time 33, we have all the remaining process in the ready queue. All the remaining process. So, once you know all the process are there, it becomes very really simple. Just take the process which is the next highest priority, schedule it for the complete length, then again the next highest, then likewise. Lastly, we will schedule the lowest priority process. So after 0, the next high number is 1. So let's schedule P4. How much it needs? It needed 10, now it becomes 7. So 33 plus 7 means 40. Alright, so P4 finished completely and the next highest number is 2 which means p1 to be scheduled so here we go p1 p1 needs how much 9 remaining so 40 plus 40 plus 9 is 49 it also got finished now 
the next highest number is 3. So P3 gets a chance. So P3 and it needs 2 burst. So 49 plus 2 means 51. Okay. And I'm continuing right here. The last process. Okay. So P3 done. And the last process to be scheduled is P5 which needs 16 burst. So 51 plus 16 makes how much? 67. 67. So this is how the scheduling is going to work and this becomes your Gantt chart. We schedule all the process one by one and you have seen how and where the preemption takes place. Correct? Because the question is asking the average waiting time. So let's quickly get the waiting time there. And there are two ways. You can find out the completion first, then the turnaround and then turnaround minus burst becomes the waiting time. But what I'm going to do here is directly from the Gantt chart, looking at the arrivals and the Gantt chart, we'll find out wait time. So for the process one, it comes at time zero, comes at time zero. First of all, it doesn't have to wait for anything. But after two burst, it got rescheduled at 40. So in this duration from 40 to 2, what it is doing, I mean from 2 to 40, what it is doing? Nothing but then wait. So it becomes 40 minus 2. So for your understanding, I will write 40 minus 2, that is 38. Okay, 38. Now, P2. P2 comes at 5, immediately scheduled right there. For the for complete length, no waiting at all. So it becomes nothing but then 0. Next, P3 came at 12. P3 came at 12, got scheduled at 49. So 49 minus 12. So it is 49 minus 12, that is 7 and 3, 37. All right. Now, next P4, P4 came at, uh, is scheduled at 33, came at 2. But then again, you see, here you have to keep, take care. P4 was scheduled two times again. For initially at time 2. So when at the time 2, it got 0 waiting. But then again at 33. So from time 5 to time 33, it was just doing nothing but then waiting. So that becomes 33 minus 5, which is nothing but then 28. 28 burst, it had to wait, which was exactly same as the burst time of P2 because it waited for P2 to complete. Correct. Now P5. P5 came at time, time 9 and it was scheduled at 51. So it becomes nothing but then 51 minus 9. So 51 minus 9 is nothing but then 42. So this becomes a respective waiting time. Just we have to sum that up. 8 plus 8, 16. 16 plus 2, 18. 18 plus 7, 25. So 5 and this becomes 2. 2 plus 3, 5. 5 and 3. Uh, 5 and 3, 8, 8 plus 2, 10, 10 plus 4, 14. So this becomes 145. So once we have 145 as a total waiting time divided by the number of process, that is 5. So we get how much? 5, 2, then 4, 29. 29 is the answer. The average waiting time, the average waiting time right here, the average waiting time for this scheduling is nothing but then 29. Okay. So this was the preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. We saw the gate question to understand it. I'll come in the next video with more questions from the same algorithm and from the previous year gate questions. You stay tuned till then. Take care and bye-bye.